Today I will be talking on steel making fundamentals. Steel making fundamentals. Uh, now, what is steel making in fact? Steel making involves removal of impurities through oxidation and slag formation such that total iron content of slag and oxygen content of molten steel at turn down are minimum. So, essentially steel making involves the turn down contents of iron in slag and oxygen in steel should be minimum. So, the fundamental comprises of slag formation, slag formation and oxidation of impurities. Slag formation or you can also call it as a slag making or whatever it is all the same. So, uh, what is a slag in fact? Slag is a generic name and in steel making it means that it is a homogeneous liquid solution of oxides sulphides, nitrites, but mostly slags in the steel making contains oxides and sulphides. When the slag is cooled and in the solid state, it consists of multi crystalline phases. So, that is what in fact the slag means. Uh, now, say uh, why does it form? Say why does it form a separate phase. The reason is very simple for your information all the oxides for example, FeO, SiO2, MnO, Al2O3, MnS which constitute the components of the slag their density is, is in between say 3 to 5 or 5.5, 5. whereas molten steel has a density of 7 or 7.5. So, liquid slag is lighter than molten steel and hence it floats on the surface of the molten steel. This is number one reason why it forms a separate phase. Say number one reason is uh, density. The density of slag is smaller than density of liquid steel and second reason is that the oxides are immiscible in molten steel. So, second reason is immiscibility. So, density and immiscibility make the slag to appear as a separate phase in presence of liquid steel. Now, another question comes say how does it form? How does it form? Say in, in steel making what is done? Hot metal? Hot metal contains carbon, silicon, manganese, phosphorus and iron and as oxygen is blown then silicon is converted to SiO2, phosphorus is converted to P2O5, manganese is converted to MnO and some of the iron is oxidized to FeO. So, because the steel making involves oxidation of impurities and except carbon all the impurities forms oxides and these oxides have density lower than molten steel. So, it will float on the surface of molten metal during refining of hot metal to steel. So, it forms essentially 
because we want to remove the impurities from hot metal and to get molten steel. So, that is how it forms. Uh, now, say what is the role of slag in steel making? What is the role of slag in steel making? In fact, I will say this way that make a slag and slag will make your steel. That is what the role of slag in steel making. If an operator does not know how to make a slag, he cannot make steel at all. So, the same, so the role of slag in steel making can be said in just one sentence make a slag and slag will make your steel. So, that is what the importance of slag, but besides this there are several other importance of slag in steel making. First slag acts as a thermal barrier, as a thermal barrier what does it mean? Molten steel is covered by slag and slag is a poor conductor of heat. Hence, it helps to restore or rather it helps to keep the heat within the molten bath and hence heat losses are minimum and th therefore, we can call it, it acts as a thermal barrier. Second, it protects steel, it protects steel against reoxidation. against reoxidation. Now, imagine a molten, a molten uh, steel is uncovered and put in the atmosphere, then the iron oxidizes. Slag also protects steel against reoxidation. Third, slag prevents passage of nitrogen and oxygen from the gaseous phase to the molten bath, because there is a slag cover and whenever the gas for example, nitrogen or oxygen from the atmosphere can be transferred only through the slag and in that way slag prevents the passage of nitrogen and oxygen in the molten bath. Fourth, it acts as a sink for impurities. That means, when silicon gets oxidized as SiO2, Mn gets oxidized as MnO, phosphorus gets oxidized as P2O5, then they form a slag and by creating suitable properties in the slag, it acts as a sink for all these impurities which are coming from the oxidation of the hot metal. Fifth, slag also controls oxidation and reduction potential of slag, oxidation and reduction potential. Essentially, it is the FeO content which decides whether the slag is oxidizing or reducing in nature. Relatively higher amount of FeO in the slag is called oxidizing, lower amount of FeO in slag that is a reducing slag. Typical example blast furnace slags have 1 percent or even to that order of magnitude FeO, so they are called as a reducing slag, whereas all steel making slags they have around 15 to 16 percent of FeO, so we can call them as a oxidizing slag. So, for the above purpose, the slag must contain certain physical properties and among physical properties, viscosity, melting point and density are important. Among chemical properties, uh, 
among chemical properties uh, basicity oxidation reduction potential of slag oxidation reduction potential of slag and activity of component of slag and activity of component of each of slag. Now these above properties are determined by structure of slag, above properties are determined by structure of slag. Now slag in steel making they consist of acidic oxides, basic oxides and uh, neutral oxides. For example, SiO2, P2O5 they are acidic, CaO, MgO, FeO, MnO they are basic, neutral Al2O3 that means Al2O3 acts as base in the acid medium and acidic in a basic medium. So, let us consider the structure of pure oxides. Some essential features, oxides have cations and anions. Now, one say metallic cations, metallic cations are surrounded by, are surrounded by anions. If I have calcium oxide, then Ca2 plus ions and O2 minus ions. Ca2 plus ions are cations and O2 minus ions are the anions. Second important feature, cations of greater radius, cations of greater radius For example, Ca2 plus Mg2 plus in oxides have octahedral structure. Whereas cations of whereas cations of a smaller radius say Si4 plus P5 plus in oxide have tetrahedral structure, have tetrahedral structure. For example, if you take SiO2, in the SiO2, each silicon atom is surrounded by four oxygen ions and each oxygen ions is surrounded by silicon. For example, if I take this is the silicon, it is surrounded by four oxygen ions and each oxygen is surrounded by two silicon atoms. So, this structure repeats in three dimensional and gives us the oxide like SiO2 which is electrically neutral. Now another important feature is that in the acid slag the tetrahedral network which is present in three dimension which is present in three dimension they are joined at the vertex. Now with that I mean for example if this is the one tetrahedra This is one tetrahedra of silicon oxygen tetrahedra. That is here oxygen, 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 silicon, and here is oxygen. Now the two tetrahedrons they are joined at the vertex. For example, if I take this one, this, this, so These are the two tetrahedra, they are joined at the vertex. 
So, this is one oxygen, another oxygen, another oxygen, 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 silicon, silicon and surrounded by the oxygen. So, these are the two tetrahedra. So, what is being said here is that because cations in acidic oxides they have lower air radius and hence they follow the tetrahedral structure. That means each tetrahedron is joined at the vertex and this particular structure is repeated in three dimensional and hence we get the electro neutral SiO2. So, a three dimensional network will look something of this way. I will try to draw for you. So, this is a hexagonal network it forms. They are all the tetrahedron, they are joined at the vertex and so I am just showing the position of the ions. So, this is one oxygen, another oxygen, 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 oxygen. This is one silicon, this silicon, this is silicon, this is silicon and this is silicon and another oxygen is over here, over here, over here, over here and over here and uh, see now in three dimensional this will go further this way. further will be joined by another vertex. So, this is how in a three dimensional network a silica structure looks like this. So, what we, what we can imagine at the melting point the same type of structure prevails. Now, as it is known that means viscosity is inversely proportional to fluidity. Lower fluidity, higher viscosity, higher fluidity, lower viscosity and fluidity is directly linked with the movement of the ions that are present in the liquid. So, if the size of the ion is larger, then you require higher force. If the size of the ions are smaller, then you require the smaller force. That means, if the size of the ions which constitute the liquid is larger, then the viscosity will be very high and opposite is true. That is, when the ions are smaller, then the viscosity will be very low. So, the SiO2 just at the melting point it will consist of very large size of combination of uh, cations and anions and hence the viscosity of SiO2 just at the melting point is very, very high. Now, if we want to reduce the viscosity, then one option we have, what we do we go at a very high temperature. So, at very high temperature what will happen? due to thermal dissociation the bonds will be broken and we have ultimately at very high temperature a mixture which contains Si4 plus and SiO4 4 minus. Now, we have reduced the size of the ions hence the viscosity will decrease and fluidity will increase, but this requires a very high temperature and such a high temperature is not possible in case of steel making. So, now what to be done? Now, we also understand that acid oxides, in fact these acid oxides can also be considered as oxygen deficit. Because they are oxygen deficit, so they have a tendency to form a simple ions as the so called SiO4, 4 minus. So, remember acidic oxides they are oxygen deficit that means they require additional ions to form a complex ions. 
you will understand better when I say basic oxides they are oxygen donors. For example, if I take calcium oxide it will give me Ca2 plus and O2 minus. So, Ca2 plus does not form that complex as silicon O44 minus. So, basic oxides are oxygen donors and these uh, O2 minus ions they can move freely into the melt. So, now what we can do if we want to reduce the viscosity of acidic oxides that is only possible when we break all the four vertex of the tetrahedra then the size of the ion will be smaller, energy required for the flow will be smaller and the fluidity of the slag will be very high. So, considering that most important oxides in steel making they are SiO2 and Al2O3, Al2O3 also behaves in a similar way. Now, let us consider an addition of calcium oxide. So, if we add calcium oxide, what calcium oxide does? So, if we add calcium oxide, then calcium oxide dissociates to Ca2 plus plus O2 minus. Now, you see, if I supply 2 O2 minus, then I can break all the 4 tetrahedron because the 4 vertex are joined by another. 4 vertex. So, if I break all the 4 vertex then I will get the ionic species which consists of SiO4 4 minus and this is only possible when I add 2 O2 minus ions. Other way round if I add 1 mole of calcium oxide I am putting I am adding 1 uh, mole of O2 minus ions. Now, this 1 mole of O2 minus ions will break 2 vertex. If I add 2 O2 minus then it will break all the 4 vertex. So, if I make it for example, if I put it say total oxygen atom say oxygen atom upon silicon atoms in SiO2 that is 2 is to 1. If that is the case then all the corners of tetrahedra are shared, all the tetrahedron, all the vertex of tetrahedron in a three dimension will be shared. The size of the ion which will be available it is very high and hence viscosity of slag is very high. Now, what I do? I know the basic that if I add 1 CaO, I am putting 2 O2, I am putting 1 O2 minus ions and 1 O2 minus ions can break 2 tetrahedron, 2 vertex of the tetrahedron. So, what I do? Now, I add for example, 2 CaO and 2 CaO will give me 2 Ca2 plus plus 2 O2 minus. That means, now if I have this oxygen, at, oxygen atom upon silicon atom ratio. that is equal to 4 is to 1, 4 is to 1 that means, the composition will be 2 MO into SiO2 or 2 CaO SiO2 in that case what will happen? All links are broken and the ionic species which will be available after the addition of 2 moles of calcium oxide or 2 moles of any basic oxide then I will have an entity in the slag which is SiO4 4 minus and size of this entity is very small and therefore, the viscosity of the slag decreases drastically. So, that is what the from the structural point of view the addition of calcium oxide it rather decreases the viscosity of slag. Now, between the ratio 2 is to 1 and 4 is to 1 for example, you have the ratio 5 by 2 or 3 by 3 is to 1 or, or 7 is to 2. Say we add uh, say here 1 mole of calcium oxide, we add 1.5 moles of calcium oxide, 1.75 moles of calcium oxide. 
So, in that order as you increase the amount of CO till you come to the ratio 4 is to 1, the viscosity will decrease and attain a minimum value at the ratio 4 is to 1. So, having understood the addition of calcium oxide on the structure of slag, now we can say that the progressive addition of calcium oxide till the formation of 2 MOSiO2, there will be decrease in the viscosity of the slag. So, if you want to summarize, we can say that increase in CaO decrease viscosity of slag. Increase in temperature, no doubt it also decreases viscosity of the slag. Now, also Na2O or CaF2 decrease the viscosity of the slag to a larger extent as compared to when calcium oxide is added. Essentially, it is because the CaO and Ca2 plus it has two charges. So, it will join two SiO4 4 minus ions. Na2O has single charge that is 2 Na plus and it will be able to join only one SiO4 4, 4 minus. Similar is the calcium fluoride. In the calcium fluoride F is also a one charge and it will replace oxygen or it may replace all the four oxygen and ultimately we, we may end up with the SiF4 only. So, that is the reason why Na2O and F and calcium fluoride it decreases the viscosity at a drastically. Now, as regards the role of alumina, now alumina also behaves in the similar way, but alumina has a silica equivalence with that I mean 2 Al3 plus can replace 2 Si4 plus only when 1 Ca2 plus is present. So, that is what the role of alumina. Now, coming back to the so called basicity of the slag. Now, basicity is another very important property. So, we can define either from ionic theory or from molecular theory. Now, from the ionic theory point of view, we can say that we know that most of the constituents are oxides in slag, some oxide donors, some oxide uh, takers. So, when basic oxide are added, oxygen ions will be available and these oxygen ions they break the tetrahedron. So, any free oxygen ions, free oxygen ions available after satisfying the requirement of all acidic oxides that is called the index of basicity. That means, the presence of free oxygen ions is an index of basicity of a particular slag. Now, with that I mean for example, if I write SiO2, it will take 2 O2 minus ions to make SiO4 4 minus. Similarly, if I have a slag which has P2O5, that will take 3 O2 minus ions to give us 2 PO4 3 minus. So, if you, if you now further add oxygen ions, then probably the oxygen ions will be free. Now, from where it will come? So, if I add calcium oxide, then it will give me Ca2 plus plus O2 minus. So, we can define now a neutral slag is one which contains enough O2 minus ions, so that each tetrahedron of acidic oxide is independent of each other. So, we can quantify the free oxygen which is available per 100 gram of the slag that will be equal to N C A O plus N M G O plus N M N O plus N F E O because they are all oxygen donors minus 2 N S I O 2 because 2 O 2 minus is required plus 3 N P 2 O 5 
because 3 O 2 minus is required plus N L 2 O 3 plus so on. So, any oxygen ions which is available after satisfying the requirements of all acidic oxide that will be free and we can consider the free oxygen ions as the index of basicity of this leg. But well, uh, from the shop floor point of view, it is very difficult to determine the free oxygen ions. So, normally the shop floor, the basicity is defined, the basicity is defined in very simple way, weight percent of calcium oxide upon weight percent of SiO2. Now, I suppose there are some other oxides are also present for example, MgO is present or P2O5 is present then basicity is defined in terms of CO equivalent of MgO. That means, MgO is not that effective as compared to calcium oxide. In that case basicity will be defined say weight percent CaO plus 2 by 3 weight percent MgO upon weight percent SiO2 plus weight percent P2O5. So, here what has been done now suppose if the slag contains MgO also then MgO is not that effective as calcium oxide is only 66 percent effective hence that has been taken into account they are simply the index of basicity. Now, we can also define a sort of a free calcium oxide. In literature sometimes you call excess base. I will call for example, the free calcium oxide as we have seen in case of ionic nature of the slag that free oxygen ions is the index of basicity and that free oxygen ions can take part in the reaction. Similarly, free CaO is an index of basicity in the sense that that free CaO can take part in the reaction. Now, we define for example, say a basic slag is one which neutralizes all the acid components of the slag. Normally in steel making we have for example, SiO2 and P2O5 or the acidic oxide. So, in order to define free, free CaO for example, if I consider CaO SiO2 system, if I consider CaO SiO2 system, then free CaO will be available only when the requirement for SiO2 is completely met. With that I mean that when the compound 2 CaO SiO2 has been formed, then and then the excess CaO will be available. That means, that excess CaO now can take part in the reaction. So, if I want to define for example, in kg, kg free CaO that will be equal to Kg CO added minus say 112 upon 60 kg SiO2. Now, since 60 kg SiO2 needs 112 kg of calcium oxide from there this equation comes. Now, for example, if I take 100 ton hot metal, say if I take 100 ton hot metal 1 percent silicon then silicon is equal to 1000 kg, SiO2 will be 2143 kg and then the free CaO in kg that will be equal to kg CaO minus 112 upon 60 into 2143 that what does it mean? That means, that free CO in slag will only be available when added amount of CO is greater than 112 by 60 into 2143. Now, this comes say kg CO minus approximately 4000 kg calcium oxide. So, only that CO which is which comes after subtracting this amount is the free CO and that can take part in the reaction for example, for the removal of phosphorus. Now, if you also consider phosphorus into our into our discussion, then free CaO 
then free CO again in kg that will be equal to kg CO added minus 112 upon 60 into kg SiO2 uh, minus say now we have say 142 kg P2O5 it needs 160 kg 68 kg of calcium oxide we are considering the compound 3 CO P2O5. So, that will be minus 168 upon 142 P2O5 in kg. So, if I put it this way this will be kg calcium oxide minus 1.86 kg SiO2 minus 1.183 kg P2O5. So, that is what the concept of free calcium oxide in the slave. You can also consider that free CO will you can also call it to be the activity of calcium oxide in the slag. Now, this is what a very important thing to understand the concept of free CO in the slag. Now, here it should be noted that the P2O5 forms as a function of time, then accordingly the free calcium oxide in the slag will also vary. We have seen basicity, we have seen oxygen reduction potential of slag, now we have to consider the activity of slag. Now, say activity of slag component, activity of slag component. Now, what activity means? Activity is the effective concentration. That particular oxide will be active or will be will be available for reaction when it is free in nature. So, that is what the most important. Now, from a steel making point of view, we are looking for, for example, activity of calcium oxide because calcium oxide is a component. Which, which makes slag basic, which forms compounds with SiO2 and P2O5. So, it should remain free. Then we are also looking for activity of FeO because activity of FeO determines oxidation and reduction potential of slag. The availability of oxygen from slag to metal that will depend upon what is the activity of FeO. That is what is the free FeO content of the slag. Then we are also looking for activity of P2O5. Now, since activity of P2O5 we want that activity of P2O5 should be very, very low because we want to remove phosphorus, phosphorus will form P2O5. So, it's, if its activity of P2O5 in the slag is very high, the phosphorus will revert back to the metal and that is what we do not want it. So, conceptually what we can say that the activity of any component, it depends on its mole fraction and activity coefficient. Now, the slag it follows Raoult's law because their concentration is more than 1 percent. So, Raoult's law is obeyed and according to Raoult's law activity of any component that is equal to activity coefficient into mole fraction of that component. Now, activity of FeO I have enough said when we are considering free CO, then let us take it activity of FeO which is a very important component for steel making. So, activity of FeO that is equal to gamma FeO into N FeO. Now, log gamma FeO is equal to minus 0 0.7335 log N FeO minus 0 0.2889. Now, if I write for example, gamma FeO that will be equal to 0 0.514 N FeO to the power minus 0 0.7335 and if I write now activity of FeO that means this is my equation number 1, this is my equation number 2. Now, if I combine equation 1 and 2 then I get activity of FeO that is becomes equal to 0 0.514 NFeO to the power 0 0.2665. So, this equation one can calculate the activity of FeO. Now, for example, if I take V ratio that is the basicity ratio equal to 4, then I consider say for example, uh, I take NFeO that is equal to 0.488 and I determine activity from here, then the activity of FeO it comes equal to 0 0.424 and uh, 
Similarly, if I take V is equal to for example 3, then NFEO that is equal to 0 0.350, I determine gamma FEO that comes equal to 1.110, then I be calculate activity of FEO that is equal to 0 0.388. I take another example, I take V is equal to for example 2.5, I calculate NFEO that is equal to 0 0.273, then gamma FEO that is equal to 1.332 and activity of FEO that is equal to 0 0.363. Now what this calculation means? Now this calculation means that in a CAO SIO2 system, if basicity of the slag as defined by wet percent CAO upon wet percent SIO2 it increases, then gamma FEO decreases, gamma FEO decreases and activity of FEO it increases. As you see from here that if the V ratio is 2.5 to 4 if you go is, then the gamma FEO it at V is equal to 2.5 was 1.332 and at V is equal to 3 gamma FEO becomes 1.110 and for V is equal to 4 gamma FEO can be calculated to the value of 0.87. So, the gamma FEO decreases and as a consequence of decrease in gamma FEO activity of FEO increases. Now, so that is what the important consequence of this particular calculation that increase in the V ratio that is increase in the basicity increases the activity of FEO and that one can understand also that means if you consider CAO FEO SIO2 system then in CAO FEO SIO2 system as we increase the amount of calcium oxide then the FEO becomes free and hence its activity increases so it is logical also. Now the next thing that I will come now the important property is the slag foaming. Now say what is a foam? What is a foam? Foam in fact is a dispersion of gas bubbles in liquid. A liquid is said to be foaming when gases could not escape through the liquid and as a result the height of the liquid it increases. Now given this definition now in steel making in steel making, slag foaming occurs due to the following reaction. In steel making, slag foaming occurs due to the following reaction. One reaction is FeO plus C that is equal to Fe plus CO. Now this reaction, this reaction occurs within the slag phase, within the slag phase. Another reaction is carbon in metal plus oxygen in metal that is equal to CO gaseous phase and this reaction occurs at gas metal interface. Now when the CO bubble which is forming by this reaction or by this reaction they are unable to escape through a layer of slag then what will happen? The slag will foam that is bubbles will be entrained and the height of the slag will increase. So the important point in case of foaming of the slag is that gas bubble should be entrapped, easy escape of CO bubble when it is not there then slag is said to be foaming in nature. Now the question is, is slag foaming desirable? Well to some extent yes because when the slag foams and if the droplets are entrained then the interfacial area increases and the rate of reaction is also very fast. Now in another uh, advantages are also of the slag foaming, the first advantage is that the shielding of molten metal against reoxidation, shielding of molten metal against reoxidation, shielding of molten metal. Second, slag foaming also acts as a thermal barrier, also acts as a thermal barrier. It shields the refractory lining, 
shields the refractory lining. Particularly in electric arc furnace steel making. Fourth, it controls heat transfer from post combustion flame to the metal bath. Now, how can slag forming be quantified? Say quantification. Quantification. Now, for example, if you take a bath, here is a liquid, there is a liquid, and then if we allow the gas to flow and this is now the liquid is here. So, these are the gas bubbles of different sizes and this is again the slag layer because slag was so viscous that it did not allow the gas bubble to escape from the system as a result slag has formed and this particular thickness we call is the foam layer thickness. So, now we can define foaming index. We can define for example, foaming index that is equal to foam layer thickness, foam layer thickness upon average gas velocity, average gas velocity. So, if this is in meter, this is in meter per second, then the foaming index comes in seconds. So, foaming index comes in second. Low foaming index means gas can escape easily or residence time of the gas bubble in the slag is small. Hence, the slag will be of lower foaming index. Higher foaming index means the escaping of the bubbles is delayed and hence slag will foam. So, Again, one can also say that the smaller uh, size of the gas bubble cannot easily escape as compared to larger size of the bubble. That means, the gas bubble also play an important role and in relation to steel making, when the gas bubbles they are formed at the slag metal interface, then do not have sufficient chance to grow and such slag may foam much as compared to the reaction when C plus O occurs at the gas metal interface. Now, at the gas metal interface, the gas bubble has sufficient time to grow, they become bigger sizes and they can easily escape through the slag. I mean, this is just a common sense here. So, now in this relation, what is the foam life? Foam life is directly proportional to foaming index. Low foaming index, low foaming life, higher foaming index, higher foaming life. Now, the parameters that control the foaming parameters that control the foaming, the one is the for example, slag properties, slag properties, then bubble size, bubble size, then the decarburization rate. Now, decarburization rate higher or lower decarburization rate because decarburization is the reaction which generates carbon monoxide and then location of gas forming reaction, location of gas forming reaction. In fact, bubble size and location of gas forming reaction they are little bit interrelated that is if the location of the gas reaction gas forming reaction is at the slag metal interface then and if at the gas metal interface as I already I explained a lower decarburization rate and higher decarburization rate, higher decarburization rate more amount of carbon monoxide will evolve and if the slag is not sufficient uh, viscous then it will not allow CO2 to escape through the slag layer. Now, about the slag properties I will summarize some of the slag properties. The effect of slag properties the increase in viscosity increase in viscosity increases foaming index, increases foaming index. Then foaming index decreases with 
increase in basicity of slag with increase in basicity. Foaming index decreases with, with uh, CaF2 addition calcium fluoride because it decreases the viscosity of the slag. Now foaming index increases with increase in volume concentration of particle with increase in volume concentration of particle. Now why it, why it does so? Can you imagine? Because the more particles are there in the slag, the viscosity of the slag increases and on account of which the foaming index increases. Now the viscosity of a slag which is entrained by the solid particle that is equal to mu is equal to mu 0, 1 minus power minus 2.5 where epsilon is the particle concentration, the volumetric particle concentration, mu naught is the viscosity in absence of particles in absence of solid particles. So, foaming index can be quantified as follows. Say foaming index sigma 0 that is equal to 1.82 mu naught upon 0 0.5 diameter of the bubble raised to the power 0 0.9. Now, here uh, mu naught is the viscosity of slag, I am writing once again in the absence of solid particles. So, that is to be substituted in kilogram per meter second, then rho is the density of slag, it has to be substituted in kilogram per meter cube, this is the surface tension. and it has to be substituted in Newton per meter, then dB is the diameter of bubble, the dia of bubble. Now, if I want to know the foaming index in the presence of solid particles, then what I can do? I can substitute the value of mu 0 from this particular equation and I get the foaming index in presence of solid particle. If I divide by foaming index in the absence of solid particle, that will simply come out to be 1 minus epsilon raised to the power minus 2.5. So, effectively what it says that the foaming index increases with increase in the volume concentration of solid particles. Now, this I can illustrate by a simple problem. Now, for example, let us calculate the foaming index, let us calculate the foaming index of slag which is 60 percent calcium oxide plus 35 percent Al2O3 plus 5 percent SiO2 at 1773 Kelvin. Now, this temperature in this calculation is not important because I am giving you the properties. So, this is in the absence of solid particle, the viscosity mu 0 is 3.5 kilogram per meter second, density 2500 kilogram per meter cube, surface tension 1.1 Newton per meter and let us consider diameter of the bubble 0 0.005 meter as a typical example. Now, if I substitute all the values and I get foaming index that comes to 14.3 seconds when diameter of the bubble is 0 0.005, when diameter of the bubble that is equal to 0 0.005 meter. Suppose I take now diameter of the bubble is 0 0.01 meter, rest all the properties of the same, then the foaming index in the absence of solid particle it comes 7.67 seconds. Now, you see that is the, in, that is the increase in the diameter of the bubble it decreases the foaming index. Now, if the slag contains for example, 0 0.1 
and 0.2 volume fraction of solid particles, then I can calculate sigma that is equal to sigma 0, 1 minus epsilon to the power minus 2.5 and that comes 18.6 second when diameter of the bubble that is equal to 0 0.005 meter. Now, this has to be compared with 14.3 seconds. So, now increase in solid concentration, it increases the forming index. Now, same thing I can illustrate for diameter of the bubble 0 0.01. So, this will come sigma that is equal to sigma 0, 1 minus epsilon to the power minus 2.5 and that will come 13.4 second for diameter of the bubble equal to 0 0.01 meter. So, what it illustrates? Increasing the diameter of the gas bubble, it decreases the forming index. Increasing the volume concentration of particle, it increases the forming index. So, that is what I have to say. So, here are the questions for self-assessment. So, I have framed around 8 questions for you for self-assessment. I just read very fast. So, what is the role of slag in the steel making? How does the progressive addition of calcium oxide influence the structure of molten silica? What do you understand by the silica equivalence of slag of alumina? What is the significance of forming index of a slag? We have already discussed. Discuss the properties of slag which influence the forming of slag that already I have listed. Why does addition of Na2O drastically reduce the viscosity of silica rich slag when compared with calcium oxide addition? This already I have explained because Na2O is a single charge. Now, calculate the forming index, though I calculated for you, you can again recalculate and also you can procure the different slags and find out the different properties and you can categorize the slag with reference to the forming index. Last question is based on the molecular nature of slag, calculate the minimum free CO that is required which contains SiO2 and P2O5. How much minimum free CO would be required in a slag formed during refining of 100 tons of hot metal containing 1 percent silicon and 0.25 percent of phosphorus? to steel containing 0 0.05 percent silicon and 0 0.02 percent phosphorus. Remember, you have to subtract that amount of silicon and phosphorus which is going to steel, rest will be captured by calcium oxide. So, good luck for solution of the problem. Now, the next slide, they are the reference for your further reading, there are few references are here.